Hi guys, thanks for joining. Uh, it's Jennifer from JE Photography Design um, and also the admin of the In the Box Education Group. My guess is most of you are probably a part of this group and that's where you're seeing this video. But if by chance um, you've stumbled upon it, um, please feel free to join our group. It is In the Box Education. And once you come into the group, you'll see that there is a free template download. Um, and then this Valentine's sale, obviously, depending on when you watch this, may or may not be available. But there is a free template download in the pinned post, which you can download. And also there are links to some other YouTube videos, uh, which if you follow me, you'll be able to watch them all. Um, they're completely free. And you can pop on and watch them anytime. And if you just watch in the group, Quite often there's some kind of giveaway or, or freebie or something like that and it's also great for advice, um, ideas, the creativity in here is amazing. Um, so yes, definitely come and check us out. And what I'm doing today is I wanted to show you quickly how to take your box grid and change it for your pictures. Um, and I'll kind of do a really brief editing too. So when you're in here, when you download your four box template, you're gonna see this. Uh, this is the basic instructions that come with it. And all you have to do is over on the side where they're highlighted blue, just click them and that'll turn that instruction off. But you can always just click it back on if you need, you know, a refresher or whatever. So that's there for your help and I'm going to quickly just bring these four photos in to my grid. So all I'm doing is I've already imported them from Lightroom and I'm just going to bring them in one by one. So bear with me as I do this. So what I like to do is have them all in Photoshop, use my marquee tool to go around them and I drag them all in at the same time. Some people do it differently. Some like to do one by one. I personally like to do it all together and once they're all in, oops, I highlight all four layers and go image, nope, sorry, edit, free transform. And being that my screen is quite large right now, I'm going to reduce the size to 25 and I'm just going to shrink my pictures. So the key when you're doing this is always hold your shift key to keep the aspect ratio. And right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it to the gray boxes. The gray boxes are just a, a rough guideline so you know where to put your images. So now that I have that in, I'm gonna increase my box size again. I'm gonna say do 40%. And I'm going to just move them around to where I want them. So I want that one in the bottom corner. I want this one in the top corner. I want this one here. I purposely didn't choose any with dangling legs because I didn't want to do that editing today. Um, I just wanted to do this really quick for you guys. So once I have them where I want them, I'm going to drag them down to over top of the gray box area. Um, the gray boxes are not not an important part of this template right now. Um, it just gives you a guideline. But if for some reason you want to use the template for other photos, say you wanted to make a collage, a four box collage of, you know, maybe your kids playing outside in the summer or something, you can use the gray boxes as a clipping mask. So on this one here, layer four, I'm just going to show you quickly what I would do is um, right click and you just click on create clipping mask and what it does is it clips it right to that gray box. So now I can move it around up and down and wherever but the only part of the image, is, image that you're going to see is the one that's clipped to the box. So when I drag it up any of the upper image is not going to be seen because it's outside of the gray box that I've clipped it to. So but it's not something you're going to use when uh, you are doing your in the box. So I'm going to release that clipping mask. 
And then as you're working, it's completely up to you. You can delete those gray boxes if they're annoying. Um, once you have your template, you can do what you want with it. Another thing that might be useful um, as you work with your template, you can actually, all of these grid lines are individual, but you can merge them all together. So if you take the right, the left, the bottom, and the top, which are all of these outer grids, highlight all four of them, and again, right click, click on Merge Shapes, it's going to put it all into one grid. Sorry, I'm going to hide the background. So I can turn that off and on, and you can see it all turns on and off at the same time. And you can do the same with your middle grids if you wanted, depending on the size of grid, you know, maybe you're working with a 12 or 16 box, um, you might want to do that with your grids. So just merge them, and now you have your inner grid template like that. And you can see that my boxes aren't completely lined up, and I will work on that in a second. But the question that people have been asking me is, do I leave my box lines bright white? Because that's how it's designed right now. I usually do, but there are some people that would prefer to have it match the box itself. So in order to do that, what I would do is I'm going to click on the outer grid to start, and I'm going to click on the paint box over here. Um, if you right click, you'll see there's gradient tool, paint box, um, I don't know what the 3D material drop is, but uh, have your paint box, paint bucket, whatever it is, and the only thing you have to do before you actually go in, because right now I can't click because I have the, you know, not accessible um, black circle with the line through it. So you have to go over to your grid lines, because right now they're just shapes, so you have to go over, right click, and so whether you've merged them or not, you have to do this for all of them. And you have to rast rasterize, I guess that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> um, the layer. So do that for both of them. And now, as you can see when I hover over the picture, the little paint bucket comes up. So if I press Alt, I think, or no, just, sorry, my bad. That's not going to work. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. Now, I want to paint bucket. Nope, that's not working for me right now. And now I'm drawing a blank on how to get my paint bucket up. Alt. Oh, yeah, sorry. My bad. <laughs> you hold down the Alt key, which on a Mac, I'm not exactly sure what the alt key is on a Mac, and maybe you have an alt. So if you hold the alt key down, you see the little eyedropper come up. And just click on anywhere in your box that you want to match. Uh, maybe the lightest color of white. So I'm going to click that. And over here where I have my, my two color palettes, it mine automatically goes to the bottom. So I just need to reverse that up to the top. And now I can click on my grid over here and just go over that and what it does is it colors the whole grid to the the inner white of my square so as you can see obviously my colors aren't perfect I'm not a perfect white but works for now I also didn't edit all these images either I just brought them in quickly so I'm gonna do the same thing for the inner grid so now it's a white uh, I mean uh, a very 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 light gray um, you know, maybe you don't like that. You can kind of play around and see if there's other colors, like the bottom box. They look a little bit lighter, so I could, you know, adjust it to that instead. So that's how you can play with the colors. And maybe you want to, you know, instead you want to have a border. So bear with me as I do this. But what I would do is, once I have my outer grid, Remember, I've merged them together. I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to hide the bottom layer now. So now I'm only working with the one, one grid. Or sorry, the one outer grid. Now I'm using my marquee tool. And I'm going to start just somewhere, wherever I want. And what I'm doing is holding the shift key. 
dragging down and I'm going to delete this part of just by clicking delete that box. So I can turn my thing back on, my other grid back on. But what that's done now, if I turn it on and off, you'll see there, is it's left me with a small outer border, which I can color. And I'm going to show you how I do that in a second. Just control D to get rid of my dancing ants. So now I have my outer border. Um, this was a Christmas session I did, so maybe I want to make it a red color which all I did was click over here, pick my red color, my paint box, and I've got my smaller border color um, highlighted. So I'm just going to do that. So you might need to play with it. I didn't measure it and everything and you know you, you would want to measure yours to make sure your borders lining up properly. Um, I just did it quick for the video. Um, so that's how I would do a small outer border. Now one of the other things I've done with some of mine is if you go up to filter, noise, add noise, and I usually, you can do, depends, I, I usually do uniform. And then if you play with this number here, as you can see on my screen, it looks to get a little bit sparkly. So I usually leave it in the 80 to 90 range. And okay, just warning you, this makes your image the size of it quite a bit larger. It increases it like the megabytes quite a bit. So um, just to kind of keep that in the back of your mind. So that's how I do a border. Add a little bit of color so you know it, it can pop but I still have my inner white grid. That's what I prefer. Some people you know don't mind changing their whole entire grid um, but personally I prefer to have the white grid lines um, separating my boxes since that's kind of what the whole idea behind of it behind it is to make it look like your boxes are all connected so when you have a different color in there it kind of I find disconnects them but again that's just my personal preference so that's um, in a nutshell in a well almost 13 minute nutshell um, how to color your border color your grid lines, add a small border, add a bit of noise to make it look sparkly, um, and just kind of play around with it to add different effects to your collage. So hopefully that helps and uh, you know if you have any questions ask away. If you have found this video useful and are able to use it I'd love to see what you come up with and uh, tag me in it in the group and go from there. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.